Continuing now with product variations, and we saw how we could add a size here and change the pricing as well. So as soon as I choose small, it gives me the small pricing. You don't have to have variations in pricing, by the way. So if I go down here and I simply make this price the same, let's make this $17. Let me save that. I'm going to go here and update my product just to be safe. And I go back to here and refresh. Now the price is $17 and I simply have variations. So for example, with color, there's rarely going to be a change in price with that. So it doesn't actually change the price. Here you simply choose which one you want. And again, if you forget to choose one, it reminds you, you can't add to cart until you've chosen one. Okay, so that's a way to handle variations right from within here. Now, variations really work in WP e-commerce very much like categories. And that's part of the reason I like them because you're used to how categories work in WordPress. Well, this works exactly the same way. Now I could add, by the way, I can add to this current set here, variation set called size. I can choose size here, which is kind of like the parent category, right? And I just add a new name here and I go extra large. All right. I could add variation price here. This is a default pricing for the variation, but don't forget, it could be percentage or dollar amount. The problem is this will get applied to absolutely any product that you put this on if you choose extra large. And you could probably override it, but just be aware that this is for the site as a whole. So there we go, extra large, large. So I'm adding to, I'm adding subcategories, so to speak, to sizing. Or in this case, I'm adding variants to a variant set. Let's say I want to create a new variant set. I just choose new variation set. And this one's going to be called color. All right. And I just do that. Okay. And now, sometimes you might think, oh, well, I go in and edit color. That's where I'm going to add the variance. No, that's not where it would happen. That's sort of how it happens in other plugins. That's why you might think that. But let's just hit update there. Nothing to update, but we'll get us back to here. Now, what I do is I say color. And I start adding red and so forth. And I hit my new variation. Okay, so now notice it stayed on color here because it's saying, oh, maybe you want to add a few colors. Okay, let's do that. Let's add blue. We'll add a new variation. All right, so those are in there now. It tells you how many products are using it, by the way, which is handy. Just in case you say, I want to delete this, you must make sure no products are using it. Now, let's go back over to our products. And let's say I'm going to go over to Big Oval Platter here, which has no variance in it. Notice now I've got both color and size available. Remember it said select the variance sets. Now I've got some sets to choose from. So every time I add a new product, these are going to be available. Again, I could add new variants right here. Don't forget that adds it for the site as a whole. Now, in this case, I'm going to choose color, and if I select it, it's going to choose all of them again for me. And in this case, I've only got two variants, so let's apply the variants. Now they'll have actually appear down here. This is perfect. By the way, if you go to set variant shipping, let's say, this can get a little confusing when you click on it. It takes you right to it, but you think, well, this is this my product? It sure looks like everything's the same. But what you discover is this is actually a child product, so to speak. It's not a product you see, like big oval platter blue. Let's go over here to products. It doesn't show up anywhere here, right? There's just big oval platter. But really, behind the scenes, there is a product called big oval platter blue. That's sitting in the database, and that means for this child, you can do all sorts of things like include a special download file, give it its own SKU number, taxes, shipping, all of that sort of thing. Let's go back. We're going to go back here to the big oval platter itself. Now, we didn't save the variants, by the way, so let me go in and do that. And we'll apply the variations. Remember, I didn't save them save and save 
and update. Okay, so now those are actually variants for this, and they'll stay there. So just so you understand, when you click on one of these, it's taking you literally to a child product. Now, one of the things to notice as well, since we've added variants here, the pricing box changes over here. There's no longer one fixed price. Even though these are both the same price, remember color doesn't change the pricing of this product. But there is no central price now for the product. Let's say I had 10 colors for it, right? And they all said $15 because there's no change in price. If I wanted to change the price, I'd have to do it on all 10 of them. Okay, and remember to save it, right? So the price even though it's not varying per variant, you can't control it from here anymore. It simply will redirect you over to the variant area. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind just because it can be a little bit confusing and also a bit annoying if you've got a lot of variations. And you just have to remember to change the price on all of them or else you're going to get people being charged differently for different colors. So that kind of finishes off what I think is a pretty easy to use variation control system within WP e-commerce. The one thing this doesn't have that some other plugins have is the ability to have a custom variation. Remember, if you add one of these here, if you add a variation set and new variants, it's going to be applicable to the site as a whole. There's no way to add a special variant only for this product, which probably isn't a huge issue, but just to be aware that you're going to make this available to any other product on the site.